So you got some life lessons there to kind of help keep you on path for the rest of your career and you're still using them. It sounds like you're still leveraging those things. <laughs> oh, for sure. <laughs>
you know, when they start talking, you you know, you kind of get into that conversation mode, right? Where you start talking to people and then you kind of, especially if they're guests at your hotel, you kind of start hearing, you know, little things that they're kind of giving you clues into that they may not be saying. But it's, it's interesting to me how when I talk to people in hotels and I go into hotels and, and I'm kind of like your dad, you know, you kind of walk in a hotel and you get that critical, you know, man, when's the last time you renovated this place, right? So you, you, you start automatically start, start looking at things and, you know, you acquire that sixth sense, so to speak, where you kind of know, you know, what needs to happen, what needs to happen, particularly when you're dealing with the guest. And I got to think you've got all of that because of your tenure, right, that you have experienced. In the, ho- in the hospitality space. Go ahead. We call that capturing golden nuggets, right? So it's like uh, I think you, you get the ability uh, to actually almost naturally just be able to pick up on on a lot, right? Their emotions, what they're trying to describe, how you can help them. Um, and I think, yeah, that's that's something that's really um, – it's funny. I think in, in hotels, I tell people, like, I don't work with very many Harvard grads, right? This is an industry where I think experience almost really trumps everything, um, and it's just really, it's, it's a, a science of how you treat people. And so I, I think that's, uh, what we do really well in hospitality and people that have been in it long enough. Uh, it, it's second nature. Yeah. Okay. That is awesome. So you're always in the high end stuff, you know, the five diamond and all of that stuff and above. What do you find that's most unique about the five diamond that the guests really kind of gravitate toward that type of hotel for what, what is it? maybe one or two things that they really have to have that makes them say, okay, I'm going to go stay at hotel AKA. Cause I know the guys in Alexandria got me what I need. Go ahead. I, I would almost argue that it's, it's the stuff that goes on behind the scenes that they're unaware about that, that make their stay exceptional. Um, and uh, again, through my, the course of my experience and in all these very high level hotels, um, I've got a very, a very strong playbook that I'm able to, you know, bring to new properties and, and, and recreate those experiences. And so, um, you know, I really think the experience begins even at the reservation level when you're making a call, learning why guests are coming, what they want while they're here, purpose of their visit. Um, and so it really starts at, at the ground level uh, and then leading up to their stay. I mean, there's, there's so much behind the scene work that I would argue guests probably take for granted. They don't realize that, you know, every single guest that stays at one of my hotels, their name is being mentioned at least twice, meaning we cover the arrivals the day of and the day following. Um, we make sure that they have all the amenities that they require. And so I think a part of it is a little bit of a peace of mind. Um, so the affluent traveler paying a premium knows that when they stay at these hotels, stuff is just buttoned up. They, they get what they pay for. Um, and, and, you know, I think a, a lot of that also comes down to even just the organizational charts of these types of uh, hotels, you know, there's someone to answer a phone, there's someone to deliver something immediately. Um, and so it, it's kind of a holistic uh, approach to that answer. Yeah, that that is interesting. I've got a question for you, but before I do, let me give a shout out to my sponsor. So they'll keep being a sponsor, right? Um, THM viewers, this episode is being sponsored by recover. If you've experienced a home fire tornado or other natural disaster, You know how easy it is to lose everything overnight? Well, the Recover It is a new app. It allows you to record everything in your home, store it in the cloud for easy retrieval should disaster strike versus you trying to recall all of your household valuables, jewelry, is set to settle your claims with your insurance company much faster. Check out the Recover It app and use the promo code on screen for 50% off today. And as always, we like to remind our viewers Follow us here on LinkedIn. Subscribe to our YouTube channel. This episode with Chris will be on Apple Podcasts and Spotify. And we always, always, always appreciate your thoughts and feedback. Chris, tell me something. Out of all the various roles that you've played in, which one did you learn the most? Oof, man. Um that's a great question. And I think there's a little bit of an anomaly with my experience as well, being that I've, I've been to a lot of different brands. I've, I've worked with, um, you know, I started my career with Marriott. I've worked with Intercontinental, Fairmont, Waldorf Astoria. I uh, spent most of my career with Four Seasons, uh, Rosewood, uh, and now Hotel AKA that through the course of that, I've had some great, great mentors. 
Um, you know, one property that I feel like just resonates with me is, is Four Seasons, uh, Chicago specifically. Um, I had some, you know, incredible leadership there, uh, some incredible just mentor moments that really shaped and, and defined my leadership skills. Um, and it's also just a fun as hell property. Like, you know, it was, it was neat being in downtown Chicago, you know, arguably the premier hotel in Chicago and like all the fun things that come with that. I had a, I had a crazy, you know, experience. I was overseeing the, um, really the guest experience team, front office concierge. And it's just kind of one of these funny things, even as just a guest experience or guest service manager at a hotel, you get all these unique uh, experiences that you can only get at a, at a, you know, if you're wealthy or rich and can pay for these where it's like, I had seats at like all the fanciest restaurants. I knew all the GMs. I, you know, I, I contracted a chauffeur in the city, uh, for my guests that got booked so much that I literally would call this guy up and get picked up in like a Rolls Royce. And it, I was just a guest service manager. I was a big con artist, really. Like, you know, people thought I was uh, some big wig and I honestly was just a manager out of Four Seasons. And so um, it was a really, really cool experience, uh, really, really cool city. Uh, and I can't speak enough to really, you know, the culture that Four Seasons has and still has um, is, is exceptional. They, they really know how to treat people. So, so you got some life lessons there to kind of help keep you on path for the rest of your career and you're still using them. You sound like you're still leveraging those things. <laughs> oh, for sure. <laughs> now talk a little bit about Hotel AKA. What what's Describe the setup there and some of the uniques. Talk about it. So, I mean, uh, Hotel AKA, it's actually a new luxury hotel brand. Um, the, the parent company is Corman Communities. And they've been in the hospitality game for a very long time, but in a residential or extended stay uh, model. Um, hotels are new to them, and they uh, we've had uh, hotel properties for the last couple of years. Um, so the brand itself is in expansion mode. Um, hotel AKA Alexandria specifically is uh, the flagship of the brand. Um, they are, we are absolutely a luxury product um, we are very high in design and, um, our product is exceptional of what you'd find at any really high level four star, five star hotel. Um, and, and we're still, we're making a name for ourselves. The, the company it's, uh, Corman communities has come across some pretty significant capital to, to really invest and start building out hotels. So just even in the last two years, we now have six hotels, uh, and there's a lot more in the pipeline. Right now, they're mostly East Coast, New York, Boston, Philadelphia, and D.C. And, uh, yeah, we, we are, our slogan is the most livable hotels. It's an ode to kind of the residential extended stay component. But um, we are here to play with the, the big boys, and we, we're, we're making a mark now. And uh, it's, it's, it's a really exciting brand to be a part of. Yeah, that is so interesting. Are you guys building ground up? properties? Or are you going in and taking existing office buildings and converting that to residences and hotels? I know there's a lot of that kind of activity going on. How are you guys, uh, how are you guys approaching the group? It's the latter. So we are, I mean, my hotel here uh, is a Holiday Inn post $50 million renovation. Um, so you could, you would never guess in a million years that this was formerly a Holiday Inn. Um, you know, everything here is just very high level. So they are going in, uh, full renovations, um, and, and turning around a, a very, very beautiful product. That is so interesting. We are, you know, I, I do the, the podcast, but to, to pay the bills, we're a project management firm. So we do a bunch of renovation, large maintenance CapEx type projects for owners as an owner's rep. And, uh, that is that is a interesting concept to go from a Holiday Inn to such a high end product. Is what it sounds like you've got there. Yeah, I actually, you know what, Holiday Inns have great bones. I'll give it that. And uh, it's also funny. I think you know, there's there's nothing taboo about it. But I think people, it, when they know the history, not that they're put off that it was a Holiday Inn, but you know, in DC specifically, uh, even the Four Seasons in Georgetown was a Holiday Inn. Really? And so, yeah, so yeah, I'm telling you, they've got, they've got great infrastructure or something and, uh, they're, they're great hotels to turn around. Well, you know what? I've got to check out your spot because I am a ultra modern guy and I was looking at the, uh, 
the website for Alexandria and I, I see all the, the minimalist, the modern design, and I'm going, hey, this is a place where I could live. And I'm like, yeah, I really like the setup. And, and by the way, congratulations on winning the interior design award for 2023. That is, that is awesome, man. Thank you. That's a huge accolade for us, uh, our, our management company um, and, and, and the brand, um, because we are very design forward. Uh, this hotel in particular, uh, also the hotel, a.k.a. in Nomad, New York, um, was designed by Piero Lissoni, a very, very high level uh, Italian designer. Um, and again, I think when you're in the building and, and if you don't recognize the brand when you step in, everyone's blown away. And I think that's kind of what... Um, not re-energizes me, but it also reassures me that like when people come to the door here and not knowing the brand, their breath is always kind of taken away by, I mean, the service, what we offer, the product. Um, it, it is very unique. And uh, yeah, I, I would implore you. I'd love to have you over. You just tell me when you're on your way. <laughs> so talk, uh, talk a little bit about the, what, is, what are some of the challenges that you're seeing there in the Alexandria area for say, in terms of the hospitality and what your needs are at the hotel? Yeah, you know, I think uh, there, there's a, a few I can think of. And I've been in some really interesting markets mo most recently, as in Santa Barbara. Um, prior to that, it was Napa. Um, and, and here, it's funny. I think I was anticipating that there would be a lot stronger labor force in a, in a larger city. Um, and I think it's kind of a, a two-part answer, where one is... It's not so much the case. I think that's one redundancy I continue to hear through other leaders in the industry um, really across the board is that labor still isn't where it needs to be or should be. Um, and, and I think that's going to continue to pose a challenge until, you know, unfortunately, there's like another recession or something where people want to get back into the hospitality workforce. Um, and so I think that's one thing that uh, is proving very challenging. Uh, Alexandria is a very affluent area. Um, I mean, really, the, the whole core of DMV, Arlington, uh, DC itself, very expensive places to live. Um, and so it's, it's really, yeah, still trying to manage the labor component. Um, and at this level too, you, you can't just let anyone through the door. You need to have someone with great personality, great work ethic, buy-in of the vision. Um, so there's a lot to encompass there, but I think, yeah, labor is probably going to be uh, the, the talking point for the next couple of years at least. Yeah, I, I think you're right because of the big, uh, the big shift that happened when COVID kind of kicked in. I think we lost a lot of uh, our hospitality bones, so to speak, because a lot of folks found an alternate industry to to make a living in, right? And um, it's going to probably take a little bit. I know we see the the shift in the skill level of just the building engineering skill sets of guys when we go on a property that. You know, you got to you got to have somebody that can handle the building engineering role. But the guys that are in those roles now aren't really guys that have come up in a hotel space. You know, they're guys that know their way around toolboxes and can fix things. But when you start having conversations about, you know, how they're really maintaining a property, it's like, OK, you know, they may need a little bit of help, a little bit of extra help. But I, I do believe that uh, the hospitality space lost a lot of uh a lot of good folks when COVID hit and now it's like trying to figure out a way to attract them back. Right. And you got people that are, you know, they're offering like part-time employees, you know, come in, you know, whatever your hours are kind of structured around it, offer them some type of, you know, bones to go back to school or something like that. I mean, there's a whole lot of little different things folks are throwing on the table to just to get people to come back to work. Have you guys seen any of that? You know, yes, I think uh, one of the silver linings from the COVID era is that wages, I think, rightfully went up for a lot of the workers. Um, so that that's one silver lining. Um, and, you know, I think there's a lot of news about uh, the the adverse side of this, like, revenge travel and, and challenging guests. Um, and I think there's a component of hospitality as a whole, whether it's restaurants, hotels, you name it, airports, like, I feel like there, there's there's almost a way that would benefit the industry if there was a almost like a customer accountability system to where, you know, you know, you can go to work safe. You're not going to get yelled or screamed at by like an irrational, challenging customer. Um, and there's a lot of that that post COVID people just aren't going to put up with. Um, and so I think that, you know, thinking very creatively 
um, for an actual solution to the labor. I think uh, there, there needs to be more conversation around it uh, and something along the lines where it'd be mutually beneficial, where even guests, I think, would like to know that they're going to a like-minded space that's safe. They're not going to have any you know, awkward interactions with a guest screaming at somebody at the front desk or you know, I feel like if everyone can play nice in the sandbox, it would bring a lot of <laughs> our, our workforce back. So um, I think there's there's a little bit of that in the formula, too. Right. It's just definitely a lifestyle makeup for the new employees that come into the hospitality space. You know, they kind of pick and choose how they want that to flow. And I guess as the employer, you got to kind of, you know, move with the, you know, move and shake and jive with the what they want to get them. Yeah, and I think now it's like I, I've totally changed my hiring uh, mindset where ask me five, six years ago at some of these high-level hotels, I, I would say, look at great personality. You know, you don't have experience at another four-star, five-star hotel. Thank you so much for your interest. Have a great day. Where now you don't have that luxury, and, and I've absolutely pivoted, and, and rightfully so. And I think it's like now it's do you have a great personality? Do you smile? Do you make eye contact? Like, do you like people? Uh, there's a lot of people I think just want a job and don't like people and they just, they apply. And, and so hospitality is absolutely trainable. Um, I think now more than ever, I've got some absolute diamonds and gems on this team alone that have never worked in hotels that are absolute rock stars. Um, and, and it's simply that they, they got the right energy, the right personalities. Um, and that's what I look for now. Yeah, that's cool. Talk a little bit. Is there any upcoming events, anything special that you want to highlight for folks that may be checking out the episode that they need to come stay at the uh, Hotel AKA for? Uh, well, you picked a great day to have this conversation with me. Today is actually my grand opening. So behind the scenes, I've got my entire workforce setting up the house. Man. Uh, we're going to have several hundred people here. Uh, a lot of local media influencers. uh a lot of people from the commerce. This is a big party we're having today. Um, so it's uh, it's a very exciting day for us here. Um, you know, I think for those that haven't traveled to this area, uh, Alexandria alone is one of the top small cities to visit. There's a ton of history here, um, a great culinary scene. Uh, we are literally a stone's throw away from D.C. Um, and we're also finding that a lot of guests like to stay with us on this side of the river um, just because of less congestion. It's It's a little safer. Um, and so I think we are a great middle spot for a high level luxury hotel to even explore DC, uh, and the whole DMV area. Um, so I think in the, the, you know, for the summer, summer's a little bit of an off season here come fall. We're right in the middle of it again with, um, you know, all the activations the city has to offer the beautiful foliage here. Um, and you know, one thing I learned even being new to the Virginia area as well is like an hour drive away is some incredible little towns like Middleburg, Fredericksburg. Like there's all these amazing little towns to visit that, that also you can do a day trip from the hotel to. So um, a lot more to come on the programming side, but it's uh, it's a very exciting time to be a hotel here in Alexandria. Man, it sounds like congratulations on the grand opening, man. I'll have to, I'll look for all the pictures on the website, man. That, that is awesome. I hope we go viral. We got a lot of uh, influencers, TikTokers and uh <laughs> And Instagram people coming, so it it should be it should be a lot of fun. All right, well, cool. Well, Chris, thanks so much for giving us some of your time today. We appreciate you giving us the time and talking with us. It sounds like the Hotel AKA is a wonderful, wonderful spot that our uh, our viewers must visit if they're in the Alexandria area for sure. <laughs> Please, I mean, come by. You can ask for me specifically. I'd love to give you a personal tour. Uh, anybody, and uh, yeah, I like showing the place off. So you know where to find me. All right, cool. Hey, thanks so much, viewers, for watching this episode of THM. We'd like to remind you to please follow us on LinkedIn, subscribe to our YouTube channel, and as always, you can catch this episode with Chris on Apple Podcasts and Spotify. And we always, always, always appreciate your thoughts and feedback. And don't forget, check out the Recovered app today for the 50% promo off, and we will see you next time on the THM. You guys have a great day and a great week. Take care. Ted's Hospitality Minute is sponsored by Recover It. Don't wait for disaster to happen to wish you had done this.